Hello, Minneapolis. On behalf of 85,000 members of the American Federation of Musicians, I want you to know that we stand in solidarity tonight on behalf of the locked out musicians of the Minnesota Orchestra. I didn't know I was going to be here until the day before yesterday, and when I tried to make my flight arrangements and revamp uh, where I was going, it wound up that I had to get up about 3, three o'clock in the morning to get out of Dallas to get here. And so if my voice gives out, uh, forgive me, and if uh, I need to use some notes to get all the names right that we're going to talk about, <laughs> forgive me for that too. But ladies and gentlemen, today, October the 1st, 2013, we come together to mark exactly what happened a year ago when the board of directors of the Minnesota Orchestra Association decided to use starvation as a weapon against defenseless orchestra musicians. Locking them out, hoping to impose pay cuts of 30%, regressive work rules that are unknown in the workplace of an orchestra of this stature. The day the lockout started, the Minnesota Orchestra was regarded as one of the greatest orchestras in the world. And you know when this lockout ends, this orchestra is going to be regarded as one of the greatest orchestras in the world. That's for sure. And you know this lockout also terminated the musicians' health care. No more coverage for doctor visits or for emergency care or for medicine that families need. And while the board of directors has shown no remorse whatsoever for inflicting the most severe pain imaginable upon these great musicians who have, no, have done nothing but bring joy to the community. That's right. That board has brought shame upon itself. It's brought shame upon the Twin Cities. It's brought shame upon the state of Minnesota. And upon orchestra managements all across this country. They've done that. And in their attempt to destroy the spirit and the means of living the livelihood, of, the, of an entire orchestra, the board has actually destroyed itself and the organization and the institution as well. Because no longer can these symphony board members refer to themselves as responsible stewards of great artistry. They cannot do that in this community. They can't do that anymore. It isn't responsible when you starve and you torture the men and women of the orchestra. It is irresponsible. It doesn't benefit the audience when the board raises $60 million to upgrade this beautiful orchestra hall into a state-of-the-art facility and then do irreparable injury and harm to the people who work there. I mean, what are, they, what are they doing with $60 million? I mean, are they upgrading the, are they putting in gold-plated toilet fixtures or what? What are they doing here? <laughs> Has anybody seen it? Oh, it's a bank lobby. Bank it's lobby. a bank lobby, for sure. <laughs> but, you know, the board calls that leadership and commitment. I call it economic terrorism by the rich big shots who run this town, who shift the money from the people who do the work to those who manage. And it's management without music is what it is. You're talking about managers who don't know the difference between a banjo and a bass drum, and they couldn't do our job in a million years.
<laughs> but you know, the board wants recognition for what they've done for this community. Don't you think they want recognition? So why don't we give it to them? <laughs> so I want to talk about some of the movers and shakers who have destroyed the lives of musicians in, in this town. First and foremost, we have John R. Campbell, <laughs> Director of Community Relations for Wells Fargo Bank, and that's $25 billion in taxpayer bailouts that Wells Fargo got, so they could turn around and do that to us. Talk about corporate welfare. Then you've got the famous the infamous Richard K. Davis, President and CEO of U.S. Bank Minneapolis, they took $6.6 .6 million in taxpayer bailouts. That's what they got. Billion. Billion. Did I say million? Billion with a B. Then you've got Michael Henson. He's the manager of the orchestra. And his salary last year was close to $400,000. And he's still raking it all in, even while he's starving the musicians. What a hypocrite he is. And he needs a bodyguard from this young lady right here. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some other some other of the uh, the, the great community leaders here. Have you ever heard of Patrick Bow? Well, he's corporate vice president of Cargill. He's on the board. Let me tell you about Cargill. It's an international food company that earned 2.3 billion dollars last year on 136 million dollars billion dollars in revenue. 136 billion dollars in revenue. International Food Company, and his C their CEO is taking the food out of the mouths of the musicians and their families in this community. Wrong. I want to talk about Emily Baxter, finance director of General Mills, the biggest food company in the world. But the musicians in this community have to go hungry unless their ultimatums are met. By the way, if you have any questions about General Mills stock, you know who you have to go see? You have to go see Wells Fargo Bank. Uh, did you know that? See, this whole thing is wadded all up, but you know what? We're going to unravel it right here. We're going to unravel it. How about Mark Kopman, Vice President of 3M Company? company with a net income of 4.3 billion on revenue of 30 billion dollars. How about Ben Falk, CEO of XL Energy? XL Energy. Anybody ever heard of XL Energy? <laughs> net income of 1 billion dollars on revenue of 10 billion dollars. And you know they think it's cute to shut the lights off on the musicians. Now here's a good one. Here's a really really good one. A lady named Nancy Jamison is on the board. Anybody heard of Nancy Jamison? Well, there's a few who have. She is with a, a group called Friends of the Minnesota Orchestra. And she's on their board. What a misnomer that is. But Jimi Hendrix is not here. Here's, here's a guy named Chris... Polisinski. See, I did that pretty good. Even though I'm from Mississippi, I could say a, you know, a name like that up here. Mississippi, courtesy of Denton, Texas. Uh, Chris Polisinski is head of Land of Lakes Dairy. They produce 12 million pounds of milk annually. And that company's worth $1 billion, but now their CEO is milking the musicians in this orchestra. Here's a good one. David Wickman, CEO of United Health Group, a company that earned $5 billion on revenue of $100 billion last year. This, the health care costs, you know, health care costs 
over the last 10 years went up 131 percent in the last 10 years on uh, you know we had inflation of 28 percent health care inflation was 131 percent when we get sick they profit you know that right and they're making us all sick here today is what they're doing zeroing in on our musicians <laughs> And last but not least, don't forget a guy named Michael Klingensmith. Anybody here from the Star Tribune? Any reporters here? Star Tribune? Michael Klingensmith, CEO of Minnesota Star Tribune. He's on that board. He's the guy who told, whose editorial board said, dump your New York lawyer, get him out of town, and let things be settled in this town by Minnesotans. And you know why? Because he didn't want anybody to see what he's doing. Does this sound like a board that doesn't have any money? <laughs> Does this sound like a board that needs to starve musicians into poverty to be okay? Or does it sound like a bunch of bullies who have chosen talented musicians to suffer while they themselves are economically unaffected? who feel no pain, who want to apply the punishment in the dark, hoping that nobody will see and that nobody will care. That's what they want. And we are here to prevent that, stop that, turn that around, and we're going to do that. Right. Yeah. The people on this board of directors here are some of the richest people, and they represent the richest companies in the world. This town can afford to treat musicians with the dignity and respect they reserve. And there's enough money in this town to do that, and the whole world is watching. 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 They are. Today, after a year of this mess, it's not enough just to talk about it. We need to do something about it. And I say no more groveling to these union busters. There ought to be blowback on this irresponsible board and the companies they represent. These people and their companies are not worthy of our business. What we need and what I'm asking for is a boycott. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want a boycott of Wells Fargo Bank, yeah. U.S. Bank, yeah. 3M Company, yeah. Star Tribune, cancel those subscriptions. United Healthcare, change your health care. General Mills, I mean, no more Jolly Green Giant. Come on, man, give me a break. <laughs> Land of Lakes, I mean, let's break open a different loaf of bread and let's put a different pad of butter on it, man. And XL Energy, you got to change your power company. I know there's a CEO of a power company in this town that doesn't get off on driving musicians into poverty. There's got to be. But you know, I can't do it alone. And we can't do it alone. Because we're stronger if we act together. We can't stand on the sidelines anymore. As trade unionists, as music lovers, as workers and as ordinary citizens standing together, we have the power not to, not to, we have the power to stop not only what is happening here in Minneapolis, but also what is happening to other working people throughout the company, throughout the country, throughout the company as well. So let this be the first day of our campaign to restore truth and dignity to Minneapolis musicians and to stop this terrible attack on working people. And with that, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for being here. God bless the musicians, the locked out musicians of the Minnesota Orchestra. God bless Minneapolis and St. Paul. Please, God, make a change here. And ladies and gentlemen, here's what we're going to do. Todd from the SEIU is going to start right up there. We're going to follow him, and we're going to walk down the block, and we're going to keep walking. Todd's right back there. See Todd? He's waving his hands. And we're going to take a walk, and we're going to show everybody what we're going to do. How's that? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Thank you very much.